Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and this lesson is on coordinate proofs. And let's get into it and see. Coordinate proof. Uh, basically, what we're doing with a coordinate proof is um, listing coordinate values such as these down here to prove a particular thing. Now, it's a style of proof that uses coordinate geometry and algebra. The first step is to always position the figure in the plane and you can use anything you want, but there are certain strategies to make the positioning better to help make things easier. Um, often we want to use the origin as the vertex. Try to keep it in quadrant one. You can center the figure, sometimes uh, making it symmetric helps. Uh, center a side of the figure at the origin. Use one or both axes as the sides of the figure. So if you're drawing, say, a rectangle or a square, use the axes as sides. That helps out. Um, and then as far as proving, to prove segments congruent, we've got to use the distance formula. To prove segments bisect each other, use the midpoint formula to show that they have the same midpoint. To prove parallel lines, obviously you're going to have to find the slope of each and show that they're equal. And to prove perpendicular lines, you want to find the slopes and show that they are opposite reciprocal or that they multiply to be negative 1. So, but before we do coordinate proofs, we first need to be able to do uh, coordinate points and be able to put these in. So right here, what we're going to do is we are going to supply the missing coordinates with using as few letters as possible. So we don't want to introduce any new letters here. On this first one, I'm given the origin right here, which is obviously 0, 0. So this is at a comma 0, and this is at 0 comma b. So if I were to supply this missing coordinate, it would be at a, this distance, and that distance going up, B. Over here, it's an isosceles right triangle. So that means that's a right angle, and these two are congruent. So if this has a distance of A, right, because it's at 0, A, well, then this will have a distance of A, so it'll be at A, comma, 0. Over here, for this parallelogram, they're telling me that this is a parallelogram, and this coordinate is A, B. Obviously, this is 0, 0, our origin. Since it's a parallelogram, the sides will be parallel and will be the same distance. If this right here, let's draw that out, is A, then that will be A right there. So if they're telling me that this is A plus C, then that has to be C, that length right there. And then we know that this will be B. So that's a quick summary of how to determine the missing coordinates for coordinate placement. All right, so we were going to do the student journal in class, but let's just do these additional examples here. For this first example, it says, draw a square with a length side 4 in the coordinate plane, label the coordinates of each vertex. Okay, so they tell me on this one that the center, one side at the origin. Since I have to center it at the origin, they're saying that's the center of one of the sides, so that means I'm going to go out 2 in this direction, negative 2 in this direction, so I just have to center one of the sides at the origin, and I'm obviously going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And this is my square. That's 4 by 4. So this vertex will be 2, uh, comma 0. This will be 2, comma 4. This will be negative 2, comma 0. And this will be negative 2, comma 4 on these vertices. Okay, we have to use the origin as a corner on the next one. So if this is my axes, using the origin as a corner would put this like that. And this is 0, 0. This would be at 4, 0. This would be at 4, 4. And this would be at 0, 4. All right, moving on to the next problems. Let's see what we got here. Okay, it says, um, <clears throat> oh, they had drawn the... Uh, grid for me here, but we'll go move on to the next ones. Given rectangle A, B, C, D has vertices A, 0, 4, B, 6, 4, C is 6, 0, and D is 0, 0. E is the midpoint of segment DC, F is the midpoint of segment DA. We need to prove that the perimeter of the rectangle D, E, F, G is one half the perimeter of rectangle A, B, C, D. And basically what they're doing in this is they're wanting us to find um, the rest of this coordinate proof. Now, a coordinate proof, when we write it, is going to be very informal. 
And it's not, we don't have to write the statements and reasons like you are accustomed to. Um, so this is how they're choosing to do it, and we'll just do it in this method. First, we have to find the perimeter of rectangle ABCD. Well, the perimeter of rectangle A, oops, A, B, C, and D, we know that this is going to be a length of 6, and this will be a length of 4 just based on the coordinates that they gave us, right? Because B is at 6, 4. So this perimeter is going to be 20. 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4. So the perimeter of ABCD equals 20. All right, now we have to use the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of E and F. So E is going to be 6 minus 0 over 2 because we're at 6 over here. Okay, so that'll give me a value of 3, comma, 0. And we could take a look at the graph and see that that's at 3, 0. F is going to be up here at 4, minus 0 divided by 2, so that would be at 0, comma, 2. Okay, and then G over here would be at this middle point, which would be 3, comma, 2. Now that we know all these points, we can find the perimeter right here in step 5 of this rectangle. And this right here is 3 by 2. Oops, 3 by 2 and 3 by 2. So this perimeter would be 10. And then is the perimeter of triangle DEG one half this? So yes, 10 equals one half of 20. All right, so let's do the next one. Again, these are kind of written out for you, and then we're going to do one down below where uh, we have to do the whole thing. So over here, we are given this rectangle. E is the midpoint of DC, and F is the midpoint of DA. Prove that the perimeter of the rectangle is one half the perimeter of rectangle ABCD. First, find the coordinates of B. So to find the coordinates of B, this says 2L, 0. And over here, this is at 0, 2W. So this will be at 2L, 2W. All right, so 2L, 2W. Okay, next we need to find the perimeter of triangle A, B, C, D. So this has a length right here of 2W. This has a length of 2L. So if I add 2L plus 2L, plus 2w, plus 2w, I will get 4l plus 2w. Now, use the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of E and F. To find the coordinates of E right here, this will be half of 2l. So this will be l, <coughs> comma, 0. F will be half of 2w, which will be 0, comma, w. So then g will end up at L comma W. And then to find the perimeter of DEG, well, that's just going to be 2Ls plus 2W. And is this now one half uh, the other one? So let's slide this up a little bit. So is the perimeter of DEG one half the perimeter of ABCD? Yes, because one half of 4L plus 2W equals, or 4W, 4W equals 2L plus 2W. Okay, for this last one over here, we have uh, the diag diagonals of this isosceles trapezoid, and we need to prove these as congruent. So here's how we're going to do this coordinate proof. First of all, I do have these, and I need to prove that this length, O to Q, is the same as P to R. Okay, so uh, this is how I'm going to set up my coordinate proof. We have to show that uh, PR is equal to OQ. All right, so PR, and now all I have to do is just do the steps. Um, PR is going to be, and I'm going to use a distance formula for this one. So I will get the square root of A minus, well, we'll, say, we'll say A minus B squared, right? and then 0 minus C 
squared. Because the distance, remember, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay? So over here, we end up with the square root of a minus b squared plus c squared. And I can't reduce that. So let's find what OQ is and see if this matches. So OQ will be A minus B. This is 0, 0 over here. A minus B minus 0 squared plus C minus 0 squared. And let's see if this comes out to work, what this comes out to be when we simplify it. It'll be A minus B squared plus C squared. Thus... PR, take a look at here and take a look at here, is equal to OQ, so it follows that the diagonals of trapezoid, we'll say isosceles trapezoid, um, OPQR, OPQR are congruent. And that is our coordinate proof, how we set it up. All right. So hopefully this wasn't too bad. We'll do a few more coordinate proofs in class to make sure we understand this. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.